Chair, uh, Kim Bates is here this evening, and also with members of our, our math committee. Uh, Kim's going to do a, a presentation of what she, the work that she's done the last three years with the math committee, and then um, provide you with a recommendation for textbook adoption for grades K five. Uh, she's well, done a lot of great work with us. So I'll let I'll let Kim take that over. But I'm just saying. Well, she sets up. We all went over and said hello to our new student representative, Nikki. But we didn't get you didn't get an opportunity to welcome her, welcome you, and introduce yourself. Can you just tell everybody and all our fans at home who you are? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Nikki Bank Truman. I'm a junior, going to senior, and I'm the new Metro School Committee Student Council. Well, well, great to have you. Thank you. Picture, lovely green. <laughs> When Jeff asked me to do this last week, I was secretly thrilled because we have really been through a journey and I'm dying to share it. But I do want to recognize that I have representatives here from each of the three elementary schools. Hi, Nikki, by the way. It's nice to see you. Me too. And uh, I'd like to introduce Marie Pendergast. She's a first grade teacher at Memorial. Lori McNeil, who is our math specialist at ULAC. And then my Vanna White, um, <laughs> Carrie Campbell, <laughs> fifth grade at Yale Street. So um, even though I know your time is very precious, I hope you'll bear with me as I take you three years ago when I started uh, the position of director of curriculum. One of the first projects that the former superintendent asked me to look into was our math program. Um, as it was, we had two different things going on, K-3 to and then something else at Dale Street. And it just so happened Common Core had just come out. And he wanted me to really take a look at how we were doing, what we needed to do. Um, and the, we decided to put together a team. So in February of 2012, I put out an application for a vertical team of teachers. I was looking for two teachers in each grade level and then, of course, our math specialist to join us. And we had no problem finding people. As a matter of fact, original three are here. Um, and we established the goals really were to start by taking a look at this lovely document, the Standards Massachusetts Frameworks, that incorporated the Common Core. And then we also wanted to understand the guiding principles that started this document really understand what, it, what was driving the, the ideas behind it. And then we also wanted to understand the um, standards for mathematical practice, which were kind of new to us and really have habits of mind that are embedded in the entire math curriculum K-12, pre-K-12, things like perseverance and problem solving. We also wanted to um, take a look at aligning the curriculum with this, with the Common Core. Our existing maps, take a look at them, <coughs> identify gaps, you shaking your head, identify redundancies, document any kind of supplemental material that we needed that wasn't provided with the programs we were using. We also wanted to develop a consistent curriculum map. We didn't, because people had been working on math for years, it sort of evolved into everybody doing different things. So we, we thought it was important that we be consistent. And then we also wanted to make sure that we were sharing this information through vertical teams. That has been a common theme with our elementary group for many years, that because the way we're set up for the three different schools, we don't all, always get to talk with one another. So we're trying, and Jeff's been so supportive of making sure that we do that wherever we can. Um, and then we, we felt that this team should also really lead the, their colleagues, their great specific colleagues, through a new understanding. Lofty goals. And through it all, we basically had just two essential questions. One was, how do we integrate the common core state standards into our curriculum maps? And units. There was no talk of a new math program at this point. And then how do we communicate that to the entire K-5 staff? So basically we took from February of 2012 to September of 2012 
after school on their own time um, with a research and development stipend to take a look at those curriculum maps and the pacing within their own grade levels, share it with each other, and then also pull from a variety of resources, supplemental materials, so that they could then figure out a way to communicate it to their peers. Um, in the fall of 2012, we had two new principals, Louise Snyder and Donna Olson. So we decided that it would be a great way to start the year by bringing the entire pre-K to five staff together at Memorial. And in the morning of this professional development day in October, we, the administrators and the vertical team, do you remember this? <laughs> Did a presentation of the Common Core and the Massachusetts State Frameworks, the work that we had been doing. And then it was, it was really, really nice that each member of the vertical team did um, their, a lens of their grade level. What does it look like in first grade, in third grade, in fifth grade? Specifically, what should you be focusing on? What can you let go of? Those types of things. That was the morning presentation, and then in the afternoon we had grade specific breakouts where the leaders, the vertical team, again, walked their specific grade levels through the, um, the work that they had done those past few months. Are you with me? <laughs> I get all excited about this stuff, and then I think, mm, it is late. <laughs> It looks like we have three more We're years We're one year. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies. Uh, now, also, during that year, so that kicked us off, we decided that we were going to have consistent grade-level meetings, hopefully twice a month, where we would keep those curriculum maps alive and have the grade-specific groups talking about them. We also had small vertical teams where we uh, I would lead a half day job embedded where we would pull, say, kindergarten and first grade teachers. Let's really take a look at what's expected. And then we did two and three, and we did K1 and two, and we did two and three, and we did three and four, and we did three, four, and five. Basically, if you think about it, Carrie Powell's fifth grade teacher, yes, she's interested in kindergarten and first grade, but not to that level. So that's why we wanted to do the smaller vertical teams because then the, the large vertical team was still communicating, so they were taking the information they learned in the small groups and in their um, grade level groups, and we were having conversations about what do we need to do. You know, all along we were saying, this is a lot of work, <laughs> but we were, we were learning as we went. Um, the summer of 2013, we we decided that we really needed more information assessment-wise on our students. So we purchased Star Math, which really is used in many, many districts, and it's a web-based resource that gives us information on where our students are and what we need to do. It's um, a test that the kids take. And sorry. Go ahead, Carrie. Okay, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> what we decided was to pull together another group of teachers. I think all three of you were on that group too, where for two days in July, we had the star math folks come in and really train us how to use this resource. And then we developed protocol for test taking. We developed training for the grade level leaders, uh, grade level teachers. We trained the teachers. Um, the principals were great giving us the time right at the beginning of the year. Because what this does, it's called a universal screener, where it basically it gives you a baseline. It's the same test that all students take. And it helps the teachers understand where those <coughs> individual children are and what they need. So we wanted to get that done early in the year so that we could that would drive our instruction throughout the year. It also led us to understand that we needed some help in how to interpret data, that we were, we were compiling all of this data, but then what did we do with it? 
So it was a multifaceted project for sure. Um, sorry. What's this? this? Yeah. Okay. So at the same time, we knew that we needed professional development. We always need professional development, but we were lucky to find a math consultant whose name is Shapali Fox. Uh, she speaks all over the state. She's spoken for a national council for teachers of math. Um, she's one of those people that the minute you meet her, you know she's all about math and uh, just a brilliant woman. So I was so fortunate to find her and to have her come and work with our elementary teachers. So we decided that we, we needed to survey the teachers and find out what they felt they needed for professional development. Um, they clearly said they needed more training on the standards themselves. They wanted to experiment with math centers and guided math. They wanted help in putting problem solving, embedding it into everything that they do as the Common Core suggests we should. And they wanted common assessment. They wanted some confidence in building assessments. So we developed six half days per grade level that first year. She would go to Memorial and work with kindergarten, kindergarten teachers in the morning, first grade in the afternoon. And she would do that for each of the three schools and then start over again so that every grade level had six half days. Um, what I loved about that training, I think it was a little bit painful for the teachers because we almost learned, we, we didn't know what we didn't know, I'll put it that way. And she came in at a, at a level that perhaps we weren't quite ready for, but what I truly loved about her work was she was modeling the shifts, the instructional shifts that the Common Core really is expecting math teachers to provide. And she actually helped us gain such a, a deeper level, really understanding what it was that we didn't understand, if that makes sense. Um, we're, okay, Chris, now we're up to 2013, 2014. <laughs> I brought the math study team back together, and we had some new goals. We started thinking, okay, we're, we're really pretty sharp right now. We have all this professional development, we understand the standards. It's time for a program because it became very clear that what we had wasn't meeting our needs and that we were, we were driving ourselves crazy. We were, we were building tests. We were pulling materials from everywhere. We knew what we were supposed to do, but was everybody on the same page? We're pretty sure we weren't. Um, it was... It was time for us to really start looking at what is it that we expect from a math program now that we have all this knowledge. So the goal for the team that year was to establish criteria for a mathematics program, you know, what is it that we need, survey the teachers again, review current resources, because we knew we couldn't purchase anything. That wasn't an option that year. How are we going to get teachers on the same page? And then also to give input for the following year for professional development, ongoing professional development. Um, where am I? Yeah, thank you. So after that year of working together with the math study team, it, what we the results, what we decided was important for you to know. The publishers were not ready. We. We hated to admit it, and Jeff came in, that was the year you came, Jeff, and supported, agreed that the publishers had not created materials that met the criteria we were looking for. So we were not going to purchase anything, but there were some excellent options. Um, online, there were several states, and we don't know how they had the time to do it, but had really created some amazing aligned resources for us to use. Meanwhile, the state of Massachusetts, the Department of Education, had a project called uh, Model Curriculum Units, where groups of teachers and administrators meet, and they were designing units for pre-K to 12, free of charge, standards-based, using the same template. Um, uh, you know, they look a little bit different depending on the team that created them. 
but at the time when we met um, a year and a half ago or so, there, were, there was one unit for each grade level. So those were given out to teachers. And um, we also decided that the teachers just truly need a deeper understanding of those standards. What we agreed to do as a district, or K-5, to we were going to really devote common planning time to math and discuss it on a regular basis, so it was twice a month again. We were committed to that. We were committed to using that data from STAR Math and our common assessments to drive instruction and to really learn how to do that. We were um, committed to creating common assessments. We weren't feeling 100% um, positive about it, but we were committed to using them and talking about them. We also were committed to keeping those curriculum maps alive and revising them wherever possible. And we agreed that we would use just those selected online resources. In addition to that, Shapali came back. And that this is this current year, she's been working with us once again. And this was, I'm, I'm really impressed with the model that we designed. She, she, I don't know if you know this, Jeff, but she actually ran a session at a, a conference lately on the model that Medfield used for professional development because it was so creative. We knew that the teachers had interests, but the administrators had goals. So we blended them together and created this hybrid where teachers could choose three topics of interest for half-day workshops this past year. But in addition to that, they had to commit to one two-day workshop that was one domain, one concept that they were to dive deeply into and truly understand to the point where they could be the voice for their grade level. And it was to picture a giant jigsaw puzzle because now you have two teachers from each grade level going to each of five domains. And then in March, we had them put it all together so that every teacher saw from a vertical lens so what, what those domains meant for every grade level. And um, we have that in a Google Doc that teachers can refer to at any time because I mean, that's a tremendous amount of information that they were given. But I don't even know if teachers feel it the way I see it when I listen to them talk about teaching math. It's so different. It's so much deeper. It's so much richer. And it used to feel like that math wasn't their favorite thing to teach. And now I feel like it, it is. And I think it has a lot to do with this slow approach that we took. Um, I really do feel that even though it was kind of painful, and Medfield has this history of creating their own curriculum all the time. Um, I don't know that I would take back these last couple of years, especially because of the professional development, the collegiality, the collaboration. Um, I've just been so pleased with the benefits, not just of understanding math, but also that PLC. We're all in this together. We're doing this for the children. We you know, have to listen to one another. We have to trust one another. We can't do it all. So we do have to trust. And I see that. I mean, I hope that you agree with me. That, well, they wouldn't be here if they didn't. But <laughs> no, I'm only teasing. Um, so we're almost done, Chris. You to take your time. We are at <laughs> this year. Can I just interrupt because I just didn't understand the jigsaw puzzle thing. Yeah. So when, you, when they're presenting that, is it like so that the, each grade has an understanding of what they're kind of supposed to pass on vertically. So you're not sitting as a fourth or fifth grade math teacher saying, I think I learned that in second grade. Is that right. the idea? Yeah, that, that the idea, to? absolutely. But also so that they don't read, they don't have to be redundant. They don't have to teach something that's already been taught. Right. You know, they can move forward. Right. And the, the room had chart papers all over the wall. And it was the vocabulary that was used because we wanted to have common vocabulary. If the children are used to a second grade teacher saying decompose, the third grade teacher should be also. You know, those types right. of things really started to gel with that jigsaw piece. Okay. I, st I mean, 
it, in a perfect world, I think every teacher should have had the experience of all five, but that would have been 10 days away from the kids, and that wasn't what we wanted. So, um, so this year, we're the math study team, the good old math study team that gets back together, and um, Jeff led a wonderful meeting where we started talking about, okay, here, here we are, what do we need to do? Where are we going? And, that, and we really recognized, the teachers recognized it themselves, Jeff, me, Donna, Missy, we all, you know, said, put on the table, you have so much more knowledge, such deep knowledge of the standards and pedagogy now and, and how to shift that instruction in the mathematics classroom. But we need consistency from building to building. You know, that is loud and clear. We needed consist we need consistent assessments. And and we need a K to five insurance plan for that instruction. And that's what a program would do. That um, sure, we're all smart people and we can create all these things, but I think we've been slightly driving ourselves crazy when in fact there is now there are options out there that we can purchase that would meet all of the criteria that the team established. So just to give you an idea, I know you're only supposed to put three bullets on a slide, but um, the, the criteria took up, I don't know, two or three pages. We just sat in a room and brainstormed. Now that we know what we know, what are we looking for? And obviously we're, we want to be alive because we're coming for it. We want a homeschool connection because poor parents, you know, we're changing, but they're not sure what it is that we're doing. And so that was like right up there, number two. Again, I keep saying the whole story problems, they should be everywhere in everything that we do, that real life connection. We want professional development. We want ongoing, short professional development that we're on the right track. We want those standards for mathematical practices embedded in everything that we do. We want engaging technology. We wanted vocabulary that we were talking about. Differentiation, you know, we talk about that all the time. It's not easy to find the materials that will meet the kids that need extra help or that need enrichment and everything in between. Programs have that now. We don't have to create it. Um, we want critical thinking as a focus. We want rigor, we want fluency practice. And those are just a few of the, the there's probably a few more, but those are the biggies. So at that meeting with Jeff, we're all sitting in a circle and Jeff, Donna, Missy, and I had taken a look at the options that were out there. And we found the top three programs that we asked this team and potentially all teachers to take a look at. They were Go Math, which is from Houghton Mifflin Hartford, Eureka Math, which is fairly new by Common Core, and then Envisions Math 2.0 by Pearson. We developed a uh, Google survey that had all that criteria and several key questions that we asked the teachers to take a look at virtual samples of these three programs and really decide you know, which one felt like the best fit for Medfield. And um, we got back together in May, the beginning of May, and had an amazing conversation that really, that everybody took it so seriously and totally brainstormed all the positives and all the negatives for three, these three programs. And um, to cut to the chase, after careful consideration and thoughtful discussion, the administration and the math study team really wholeheartedly agreed. It was slam dunk that this program envisions math 2.0 met everything that we were looking for. And we would love to recommend adopting this program K to 5. I, I've been here a long time. We have not had a K to 5 math program for Ever. 30 years ago. That is, I know, that is so, I, I don't know about Chris, I'm super excited. Chris might not be, I'm excited because, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, but I know you, maybe you are excited, you're just as tired. 
But I think this is so exciting because I've been, I've had the kids from kindergarten all the way through that, you know, you kind of get a different thing and then two kids in different grades have like similar, you know, yep. homework papers and you're like, what are you doing? What's going, What's going on? on here? And it's been frustrating, I think, for parents. And I think a lot of parents don't understand that there hasn't been a math curriculum, that it's, you know, not that people haven't worked hard and that it, it's worked, but I think there have been some real cracks in that foundation that, you know, and it's not that people aren't working hard or We um, had a curriculum, but we didn't have the program. Right, so and the, the consistency, and in, in right. you're kind of, and it felt at times very um, disjointed. I know. It, it really did to parents. Um, it did to us, too. Yeah, I'm sure. I can't imagine being a teacher. <laughs> I, I, right. I can't imagine what you guys do, but so this is so exciting. I think I love all those um, criteria that you had up there. I know, I and I did bring the um, program sampler. I don't know if you'd like me to read it. What was it about Envisions that said apart will, from Go yeah, Math yeah, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, it's, it's more aligned. More than the other ones. Yeah. And it's more recent, it's the most recent one. So they've been able to meet all of the needs better because it, it's published later than the other ones. So there are a lot of districts out there that had revision, just regular revision, which they've had a lot of success with that. But what um, Pearson did is take a look at the feedback they've gotten from those districts over the last couple of years, and they've incorporated all of the improvements in the Envision 2.0. Right. Uh, it's really an incredible incredible program. Uh, it, it's overwhelming, I think, so we're going to ease into it in terms of what we expect for instruction, but there are so many components in this program. Uh, there's, there's a really neat program for component for parents that you take, you download an app, and then you take your child's homework, and you take a picture of the homework, and it comes up, the app activates a short little video vignette that tells you exactly how the students were instructed that day so you can oh, help wow. your kid with home. That, I mean, that, that is what I'm talking That's about. So that funny. is awesome. And, I mean, because I can't tell you how many times that they'd ask you a question, like, I was not taught that way, then it's a whole big thing. Well, what happened to you? How did you end up going to law school if you didn't learn this? This is so exciting that, because you really, or it's a different math. way. I know, I don't, I don't even do math, math. math, so that's what I mean. It was so digital. They have a daily so planner people. for the teachers that's very succinct. It, it's, you know, picture several bars, and you click on each bar. One is like a three-minute video that says to the teacher, this is the big idea, this is what you want children to know at the end of this lesson. And then it has the, the homework right. piece. It's, wow. It, and then it has the... Um, so it teaches the teachers kind of like a mini lesson or like target this. Right, right. it's very it's targeted, targeted very short, succinct, okay. targeted that every teacher would be So seeing. in addition, I think Jeff was saying that each school gets 11 days of PD or, or something. Chipotle, yeah. We have Chapali again. Yeah, which wow. is yeah. fabulous. Does yeah. yeah. she work with this program? She has not worked with Envision, um, but she, I've already given her the heads up and it, it all goes well tonight. But, she should live and breathe in vision. <laughs> and she'll spend some time over the summer with it. Totally, with yes. Yeah. We have an R&D this summer with the another group of teachers, and we'll be really pulling it apart and getting to know it, if you approve. It sounds like you put a lot of thought, years, thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, it's just, <laughs> seen the I was reading that book the other day and saying, oh my gosh. <coughs> We've been working so hard the last few years, and it's all in one place, and it's consistent for everybody. So, are you still yeah. going to use Star? Is Star now obsolete? We, we really or have to. That, we have to think about that. Uh, is that another piece of assessment, or do they have their own? They are they do. going to be doing iPad assessments, or paper assessments, or a bit of both? I think both, but um, Star Math, I do, we don't have to renew for another couple of months, and I really want to look at this. It does have a universal screener. So I don't think we're going to need STAR in addition. I just assume we have one thing. Now, do the kids get prepped? I know what um, one of my children took STAR, and it was just difficult to do a computer when you're used to doing paper mm -hmm. and pen. So right. it, it's, it's That's the issue of part. Sorry? Yeah. That's the issue of right. part. So yeah. you know, and she bombed that, but she's very clever. You know what I mean? So yes. it, it just didn't jive with reality right. that I'm wondering how do you transfer 
those, how do you teach them those skills? Because that's a whole other piece. That's a whole other that's piece. piece. But that is something we, ought, that is a reality. Yeah. Because it is shifting. So we do have to incorporate those skills. I think we have to keep plugging and having kids use the computer, but have a balance. Like yes, exactly. Because so can is this completely online, or is there a textbook or a work? There is a with? there is a consumable book that mm -hmm. goes along with it, and the kids can rip it out a page at a time. And what's really nice is that it has the um, explanation and remediation on one side, and then the homework on the other. So very clear. But it's um, not a textbook. It's so not it's a textbook. Like, so like the online component, if things change, which we know they do, mm -hmm. if you're you know spending a lot of money for things to change possibly and that's why that's why we like this one that the online component changes fluidly mm -hmm. um, so that that was really crucial to us but that there is a workbook to go home because that's important too because right. it can't all be online mm -hmm. and that I forgot to mention <coughs> that Carrie was part of a group at Dale Street that received a coalition grant thank you um, and they went to the NCTM conference because it was in Boston and they were the one, they, I mean, if somebody, Marissa texted me, like, oh my goodness, we found something really amazing. So, you know, did, little did they know, we had already put that on the list. So they had so much information that they came back with, really excited about. And I know we budgeted for a new program. So we budgeted uh, 40000 in FY16 for it. It certainly is, is a little bit more than that. A lot more than that, it's about 100,000. Um, but we're actually going to be able to, it's cost saving in FY15 to uh, purchase some at the end of FY15 and then the rest of the FY16. Yeah. The, the neat part of this is, is that the, the, the what we've been negotiating with the with the um, with Pearson is it gives us our consumables for the next six years. So that in this price that we're looking at right now, consumable books are in for the next six years. Does that include in the 100,000? Yes. They could amortize it over Correct. six years. Right. So. so it's a six-year commitment with them, mm -hmm. uh, and it's all part of it. Does that include if there's a 2.1 or 2.3? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's all included. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, all updated. And how much cost savings if we don't have STAR? Um, that is about 15,000. But that's a yearly subscription, so it's not, a, it's not a huge right. savings. It just doesn't, I don't want to over test the kids and you know, there's no need to have right? that redundancy. Any other questions? So this is one of those core school committee roles, budget, policy, and, and actually textbooks. So this follows all those. It's a much part of program these days. Mm -hmm. It's one of the core things that we need to vote on. So we have, I understand, Dr. Marshall's recommendation and Kim's recommendation is a motion to approve and adopt. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? There you go. Thank you. 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 The field study actually includes uh, surveying the existing conditions of uh, six different fields in the uh, town of that field. And I'd also, uh, we want to get the preliminary design option for the detailed cost estimate for the uh, study. So once we're done with the study, not only do we want to, you know, is it going to be field turf, is it going to be grass, but we also want to know what's the cost, you know, associated. And we're going to give you like a menu. And then you guys can select off of that menu that you feel is appropriate for the town of that field. Uh, so that study was actually is going to go into advertisement into the central registry. The central registry is a um, basically a database where um, all the information for any design or construction um, for any towns or cities or state uh, we have to advertise on that website, uh, and it's a public. Um, document where any designer or engineer can go in and look at those documents and then decide if they're going to uh, put into an RFP for that project. So that's going out on June 10th. We're also going to advertise in our local paper. We're required by law to advertise in three different um, 
publications, one should, one is the Central Registry, one will be the local paper, and our website will consist of the third publication. Uh, on June 17th, we will hold a uh, briefing session for firms that are interested in this project to explain the project and answer any questions that they have. Um, that uh, meeting will be held at the superintendent's office on June 17th. And then on June 24th at 12 noon, um, all proposals are due to the superintendent's office. Anything that is submitted after noon time will be rejected. Um, also, the timeline is according to just a couple of, of uh, conversations we've had with different designers. Uh, the study can take anywhere between three to eight weeks. We're hoping to have the study back to the school committee by sometime in the fall, so we'll be ready for a town meeting. Are those fields are not eligible for MSBA? Fields are not eligible for MSBA. What is that? For the Mass School Building Authority. Oh. It used to be when you built a school, you could get fields to pay for, and then when they revamped it, they wiped that out. But I didn't know it was So the And um, is the PBCC get involved with fields, or is that? Not, it's, not, well, it's not construction. So it's I not construction, it. so uh, I guess Tim would know. Tim's on Tim would know. Absolutely, he okay. would know that question. Our, our responsibility right now is just to get the field study done, uh, look at different fields along uh, or within the town. We designated a big field, we lock fields, um, the high school fields, the few high school fields we're going to look at, um, uh, McCarthy Field, I believe. Yes. Uh, so there's a few fields that we want to study and look at. And part of the survey is going to tell us, you know, are these fields being used, overused, are they underutilized, and if they are being overused, what's the best possible uh, material to use on these fields? Is it grass? Is it multi-purpose turf field? So we're going to get all these answers that we need in order to bring to the town meeting members. Are they going to do this study over the, they study it over the summer months based on information that you get because obviously they're not going to be able so to what, 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 what they'll do, what, I've done this in the past in another district, what they'll do is the, you know, either a architectural committee or an engineering firm or some type of firm will come in that we select that we feel meets the requirements that we're looking for but also that, you know, they, they work well with the community. They'll come in and they will interview, you know, um, high school principal, superintendent, the athletic director. They will interview any of the youth um, organizations, um, high school, basketball, no, excuse me, uh, football. Uh, they'll look at the soccer program, lacrosse programs. They'll look at, you know, if we're looking at softball, baseball fields, we we'll talk to those youth organizations. Uh, but and they'll get their, they'll get a schedule from us. They'll get a schedule from them. They want to know how many kids actually are on the fields at a certain period of time. What are the time constraints? You know, are they being used between four to eight, Monday to Friday? Are they being used on Saturdays and Sunday? How many hours are being used on Saturday and Sunday? And from that information, they can start gathering all the information <coughs> that we need to start looking at, you know, what type of surface or are these fields fields that should be reconditioned in the near future? Okay. Is there any like? Um parents or, or things like that involved with it? You know, because I know, just I'm just saying that because I've had so many phone calls about what's happening with the turf, that is such a mess, you know, so I, I didn't know. I, you know, with my experience, what we, they don't interview parents, mm -hmm. they'll get input from through the school community or through the youth organization, because um, parents are involved with right. those programs. Uh, and, and they'll look at, you know, sometimes they'll actually do uh, testing, so they go out and actually, you know, uh, do boring testing that they go out and take samples. Oh. Um, and then it's not going to be very hard with the high school term. Correct. I mean, they're going to look at that and say, okay, right, it's right, a few okay. years overdue. Yeah. Right. Gonna but the, the survey, the, the, it's a use survey, not the, the survey about or the decision about what we need in the town, they'll make recommendations, and then it's us and, and the board of selectmen and, right. and uh, Park and Rec and town meeting that will sort of have that input. Okay. And like I said, we'll, we'll give you a menu. So, the, you know, okay. if we're going to a high school multi-purpose field, they're going to say, you know, that's going to be, let's say, $1.2 million 
just the field and then I'll add the track to it. So you'll have, you know, the field, you have the track, you have the scoreboard, you'll have, you know, a sound system. So they'll, they'll break all that down okay. for you. And then, you know, you can select from that menu what you feel is important to this community mention. Now, is this going to be a capital budget thing solely or a hybrid, possibly, of fundraising capital? Well, I think, you know, one of the, <clears throat> one of the issues that we ran into is that, you know, fundraising takes a little bit of time. And I guess from our perspective, what we talked about was that fundraising probably should have started about three or four years ago for the new high school field. For, because we're, if you know that the life is 10 years and you're going on 11 or 12, I mean, I think you start that around seven or eight. Uh, one of the things that we've talked about, one of the biggest obstacles we think we're gonna have is that unlike other towns, Methfield has never had a paper field. If you think about it, right? I mean, it's been done with donations, yep. you know, across the board. So I think that's gonna be something that we have to work through and work with the community with. Uh, but you look at what, what Medway has just done, what Ashland has done, um, in other communities, um, it's been a community effort and it's been paid for at town meeting and bonded up for 20 years or, or whatever, uh, or 10 to 20 years, depending on the town size. One of the other things that were against, against us a little bit with this is that many communities will use their, their uh, Community Preservation Act money because you can use that toward this recreation facilities. We don't have that. So that's going to be something that's going to be difficult for us too. Uh, but we think, it's, we think it's the right way to go. I, I, um, in terms of donations, we're looking at some sponsorships, so, so field sponsorships, as opposed to um, a bake sale for a field. You know, we're looking for that some big time donors to, to do some naming rights or something like that, which we'd have to obviously go through all of you, but we're, we're talking about some options like that. And the last field was 100% paid by donations, right? Donations, and then I've been told that someone uh, had a bond, a personal bond to, to finish the job. By the folks that were involved in it, so that they they fundraised to a point there was X amount that needed, and someone floated the bond for the rest of the amount, so the personal bond to get that done. Mm -hmm. And I think it's different too if you know all the town programs are using the fields, you know, they are. whether it's yeah. soccer, lacrosse, baseball, softball, you know, everybody's using them as opposed they to are. just something. They use pro they use profile stuff to change last time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And next year is. Uh, if this gets done in time, there's a lot of debt coming off the, the levy next year. There's a lot of bonds are being retired, so mm -hmm. it's a favorable favorable time to do it because you could bond for it without materially increasing uh, taxes since there's, there's a lot of existing uh, bonds that are coming off. Mm -hmm. well, we'd be curious to see what the study yeah, tells us. I'm sure they're going to say that we're, we, don't have enough, we don't have enough fields for the town, I'm sure, but you know, I, I spoke to Kevin Ryder today and he was of that sense too. That He's, he's trying to get, he has more requests than he can schedule for the town fields. You know, oh, yeah. It's a situation that isn't just a school issue, it's a town issue. Oh, it is definitely, I mean, even at the look, look across on um, Jamboree for the little boys, they, they're playing on baseball fields, and because they're just not enough, and you go to some of these towns, and they're just, the fields are unbelievable, a lot of space. They are, and, and I mean, yeah. the other reason why we wanted to do the study is, because, you know, studies show that if you do, more than one field, you get better pricing. Um, so it, it, it drives down the cost if you're going out to bond. If you, know, you do more than one field, it's in, in our advantage to do so. Um, so but we, we want to make sure that we have you know, our facts correct and that we are doing what's best for the community. So we're not just looking at one field, but we're looking at, you know, let's look at the community. Let's see what they have for fields, and, and let's see what's the best possible way of getting more than one field done for the community. Right, and we talked about this at a meeting earlier in the fall. I mean, we could have taken a different approach and said we just want a high school field replaced. And we could have just done that as opposed to looking at what's best for the entire community and bring everyone on board. So we thought that was a good one. Now, are you looking at declining enrollment at all? Like how that affects the teams or? They, they actually, they, they will. So they'll, and we have that data. They're, they're going to ask, you know, what's the trend, how we're trending, and what does it look like in the next 10, 15? Yes, we have that uh, data. We're going to be provided with that data. Um, you know, we are saying that our enrollment is going down, but we have new developments going up in mm -hmm. that field, so that's going to actually drive the enrollment up. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to take that into consideration also. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of factors. Right. There might be an equal amount of teams. I'm not sure. Maybe it's more kids right. playing. I'm not right. sure. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, donations, Dr. Martin. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I'd like to just read some uh, donations and ask for your approval. Uh, $400 from the Relox CSA to grade three for their end of the year celebration. $430.96 from the Wheelock CSA for fans for the Wheelock School. $150 from the Blake Middle School CSA for improvements to the Blake Middle School playground recess equipment. Um, $844.87 anonymous gift to Dale Street Technology, which is from the same person that did the anonymous gift last month for Blake Technology. Um, $2,839 from the Wheelock CSA for author visits. $187.92 for two IKEA spinning chairs and $84.99 for an Osmo system for an iPad which extends the, the technology use. For the so that's some of the technology that was bought for, for deals. Is that like normal for iPad? Kind of. Okay. It, it actually increases the capacity to do a lot more um, artistic uh, works on the iPad. It's really, it's really neat. Is there a motion to approve and accept? Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. And, <coughs> go ahead. And I'd like to just, you know, once again, thank our CSA and um, others for donating. It's just, you know, great support for the community, and it's nice that we can recognize at the school committee level and, and receive these funds and, and give them the, the, the support that they need. So that they were, so I appreciate what they were for us. Uh, Mr. Chair, the whole business is elementary school day committee. Uh, we had our final meeting of the year uh, a couple weeks ago, and we're going to actually do up a um, kind of an FAQ or summary for the year on what we've accomplished as a committee and what we're looking at for the next year. I don't know if Anna May was also on the committee. If you want to share with you about that? But. Yeah, I, I suppose I invite everyone to to look at the the minutes online. It's right on the Medfield.net homepage. They need to be updated. Um, with the year-end summary. However, we started the year with, all right, what, what are we looking for in the ideal school day? So there are teachers, administrators, parents um, on this committee. And by the beginning, always from the get-go, um, I think the most powerful thing that I came out of, and a lot of teachers had mentioned it also at our very last meeting, was that we're, we're one team. It's not the administrators, the teachers, the parents, we're all working together to really improve the day for our, for our children. So essentially, brainstormed a lot of ideas at the beginning of the year, and predominantly the, the longer day was the biggest theme. And say, for example, we added 30 minutes to the, the day, what would that look like? So there were many meetings uh, in terms of crafting, because we wanted to hear from cast and net um, for all the teachers, so we compiled a survey for all the teachers, and we've got all the data now, so 86 of 120 odd teachers, was it 120? Um, took the survey, so it, it was a lot of um, A, B, or C questions, but the really rich information came out from the open-end responses, and that varied from, I took a couple, in terms of the big themes of this, was, um, you know, consult time would be affected if, you know, this, they thought, all right, if it was 30 minutes of student instructional time, what does that mean for his or her day? So consult time was a big theme. Instructional time would be great. There would be more face-to-face. -face. However, where's the, where's the time to plan those lessons? So there's so many components. You know, we think, oh, just throw in an extra 30 minutes. It's not like that. There's so many layers. Um, another one is where um, teachers said they would have longer chunks of uninterrupted face time, which was important. And um, but also there there's things there needs to be some sort of cultural shift. You know, some things that have been going on maybe can change a little. Or you know, so um, so that's kind of the next step in the fall. We have our next meeting in October, but. Um, at the pins in the fall, the principals are going to mention the school elementary school day committee and the work that's going into it. So 30 minutes isn't being added in September. Relocks not starting the same time as all the other schools in September. So that it's just what we've discovered. There's just so many layers. 
but um, it's a great group of people, and um, we're, we're really working together. And they so, volunteer a lot of time. Yeah, no, these are long meetings. <laughs> they are. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah. no, but it's, it's worthy. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we you appreciate good. you and Tim both doing it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good stuff. Martin's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so FY16 budget update, not um, a lot to report at this point other than we're still doing some hiring and um, by the August meeting we'll have all that done hopefully. Uh, but the, the principals are busy uh, doing some hiring of, of positions where folks have retired. Uh, we, we're not adding any positions, uh, as you know, from the budget. So it, it's really just replacing retirements and, and folks that have decided to, to go other places. So the, they're, they're doing that right now. Um, in terms of FY15, our next meeting, Michael will have some information on the close-up for FY15 and where we, where we stand with that. So he, he's working on that right now, uh, and, and we'll be having that information. Um, I'd like to um, table the research, research and development, if I could, for the next meeting. Sure, that okay. Uh, I gave you some information in your packet. Uh, one of the things I've been looking at on the spreadsheet is that it's kind of difficult to get a sense of what that is from that what I gave you. Yeah. So I'm going to. Tease that a little bit so it's, it's more user friendly for you folks to take a look at it. But I guess the, the bottom line is that our teachers are doing some really good work this summer, and I want to just highlight some of that at our next meeting for you so you can get a sense of what they're doing. Um, our Dale Street parking lot project is ongoing. I, I think I put the minutes in your in your packet. Mm -hmm. So, construction meetings are every Wednesday morning at 9, and uh, the building committee and the construction company have been fabulous uh, as far as accommodating us. Uh, they've been really good about when they start working after the kids get in and then giving some time where they're not anywhere near the road when, when the kids are leaving. Uh, they've had some requests that, that we've denied, things like when they can cut trees, uh, other work they want to do during MCAS time, which, which they've been great, but they've been extremely flexible because I think they're way ahead of schedule from where they are because originally this was going to be done after the kids get out. So now they've got a few weeks head start, uh, they've, it leads them to be a little bit more flexible than they can anticipate being. So their end date, they're anticipating is August 15th. Uh, at the last meeting, last Wednesday, they're looking more at the end of July, that they're a couple of weeks ahead. So they're gonna look at, at doing some of the subsurface um, work this week, and then they look to be paving right after the kids come to school. So they'll look at paving the end of June, first couple weeks of July. It, it's amazing what goes into just, just the parking lot. You, know, you think, you know, get it all out of there, put some new dirt in, put some subsurface and pave it and be done. But they had to put catch basins in and, and stormwater basins, so they've done a really good job of that. And again, I, I can't thank them enough for the flexibility they've had because I've worked on other projects in other districts. And um, I'll never forget as a principal well, 15 years ago in the middle of a dismissal in, on a one way, one, one, one place, one road in, one, one road out, and a huge steel truck came with steel delivery for the cafeteria that we're doing that was supposed to be done at 5 o'clock. And lots of times they just don't care because they're on a schedule too. This group has been very good to work with. Uh, and I let them know that last week and of course they laughed and said, well, give us a couple of weeks, we're wrong with something. But, uh, Kids will be gone by then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I said that to them, I don't care what you do after that once. When the kids are gone, you have to really be careful of, of um, you know, what the safety of kids is, is number one. So. Uh, and Kim can attest too, um, should have asked when she was here, but because of the, the proximity of this project and the way that Dale Street is situated where the, the auditorium is there and the classroom's really on the other side, you really don't hear a lot of noise. You really don't. So the kids at recess will hear it when they're out there. But in terms of the classroom, unless you're right on that corner with the window up, it's been really, really good with that too. So, uh, so far so good. And I know that you know, we were part of the whole town project in this and it was something that our teachers wanted for a long time and, and glad that it could put into and in terms of um, district recognition, just again, I know we've been talking about already, just a great graduation yesterday. I thought it, um, you know, a wonderful day for our kids and our families, and uh, just a special group of kids as they are each year, and all have their own personalities, and I'm um, just really happy for them. It went off well. And, and to thank all the parents that, that volunteered for the online grad party last night, that's a huge undertaking, which takes a whole year to plan, and uh, for folks to be there to make sure our kids are safe from, from 10 o'clock to 5 in the morning. Just really appreciate it. So thanks to all those parents that, that did that. And then Robert had mentioned earlier too about our sports team still in contention in the state tournaments, which we'd love to see our kids excel inside of the classroom. So good luck to all of them So that's all I have to show you. Um, on the FY16 budget, you know the thing I'm panicked about is the park at Midfield. 
Do you have any, you spoke before our last meeting, you, you mentioned the last meeting you've spoken to them. Any further update from them on there? Uh, no, they haven't given us an update. They did touch base last week, and just, just to let us know that um, they're putting more forms <coughs> out for folks to, uh, to come in. Uh, they are opening September 15th. Couldn't be a worse time. Right. So like we've talked about before, if it's 65 kids in one grade, we're in trouble. If it's spread over 13, and we can manage it. So it, it's, it's kind of that we're limbo and unpredictable about what what's going to happen. I mean, 65 kids spread over 13 grades. I mean, it could. We've got some grades that are sort of on the cusp of what we think is an appropriate class size. It could Correct. kick them over. Especially um, grade five and grade three, which we reduced based on enrollment this year. The budget purposes. So, so if, if we, we hit, hit in three and five, there could be an issue. If we have an emergency, that is there physical space to, to open up in any classroom? There is. Okay. <clears throat> but then you have to the hire. The model would be the only one that would, would be difficult in space because we added the extra full that kids right. 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 So if it's a lot of younger students in grade one and K, then we have to look at, at restructuring some of the rooms over there. Um, but I think we have we definitely have some room at, at we log and at the things that keep me up at night. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just so unpredictable. You just don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Every time I drive, I mean, it's, you know, development is development, and, you know. It's um, big. It's big. It's big. And every time yeah. I look at it, I think, well, the kids are. Yeah. You big. think 92 units, and then you look at it on what street, and you're like, oh, that, that's big. That's a lot of units, especially with two and three bedrooms. Thank you. Uh, so, the part of the meeting we set aside for public input? Actually, it ties right into that. Um, I'm Jerry Potts. Um, and then rest. Um, take as much time as Mrs. K took. It's going to be. <laughs> so back in 2009. Yeah, um, so uh, these 90 units, the next biggie is Medfield State. Right. Um, June 11th, they're having public participation. It's three hours. There's also the gazebo and the fourth and fifth grade concert. But this is the start of a process that clearly will head towards either development or some combination that's going to have huge repercussions. So um, just encouraging, and actually I, a couple of people had reached out to me and suggested that this would be the kind of project that students, when Mr. DeSorge came in and talked about civic engagement, the state hospital is a fascinating thing for the kids potentially to get involved as we head towards the fall. But in the immediate June 11th, big meeting, and that's really going to dictate what the developers are going to do, what DHB is going to do, the consultant they've hired. That's the outreach to the community. And there are you know, 600 units and develop like crazy, and then there's bulldoze the buildings and make it open space. And, and those are the two extremes in there. But what they're going to end up doing is going to be whatever voices we as a community do. Right. So just encourage people. It's the 11th. Probably no one will see it by then. But there's lots more. There are two other sessions that are going to take place on that. And I don't think there's any decision that's going to impact. These 90 units could be dwarfed by right. potential yeah. development there. So just encouraging, I know you guys have more than enough on your plates, but spreading the gospel, spreading the word to get people out and participate and have a voice in it. So, so where is that being done? It's it, here in the school. So it's at the high school in the cafeteria on June 11th. So the principals and I have, um, have told the committee that we'll be tweeting that out tomorrow. So that they, they, they reached out to us and said, hey, we sent it out on Thursday packet, I believe last Thursday. Yep. Um, and then we would, we would, they asked us to use social media to get out to all of our followers so that more people can get out. I know Richard has sent it out on his, his Twitter. I saw it yesterday or today. Um, so I think we're going to try to do a blitz out there to get the word out so folks can participate. It's just really important as Jerry said for all of us. There was something in the, uh, the hometown weekly last week. I know there have been email chains spreading around, but I think mm -hmm. people don't always understand the importance of actually attending and uh, being it, present yeah. at these meetings. It's, it is so important. Right. Well, they've done the visioning session, and I think a lot of people thought that, I and mean, that was the appetizer yeah. that kind of started, but that information's been passed on to BHP. But BHP is a developer, I and mean, that's mm -hmm. what they do. So there's a lot of fear that that's going to be a lot of pressure on the infrastructure here. And, but on the other side of it, we also have a tax base. So. I had that chair on my list of things to say. Yeah, I was at a party not too long ago where um, people were saying, complaining to me because I'm on the school committee, I must know everything about the public. Uh, safety building, I must know about public works. How could these have all happened without us knowing? I mean, people, I literally never heard of town meeting, you know, didn't know, you know, they knew we voted this part because, you know, we, we, we were all together made sure that was known. So do we vote, when do we vote again? November? So it's yeah. troubling to me how many people know and um, it's, it's been coming on all of us who do know to get the word out. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, we, our next meeting is next Monday.
Um, and I believe it's the last one until summer. It is. Um, it will be a pretty full agenda as tonight was. We have school improvement plans from all the elementary schools, um, including Mrs. Cave and so you can, I'm just teasing, I, I, love, I love Kim, she does that. Uh, there will also be a report on the Dale Street music pilot and survey that went along with that. We will recognize some um, teacher retirements, as we always do, and have an end of your report from student services. That's a lot to accomplish in one night. That's, I mean, that looks like a three-hour meeting to me, just with those four things, so eat dinner before you come. Uh, Nikki, you have anything to add? This is the time, I mean, we set aside, you know we probably have told you this, right? We set aside a time in the meeting where we all get to say something. If we haven't gotten to say it, remind the community about something. As Mr. Foss did, let us know anything you'd like to add. You're welcome to. Um, well, for student council, we have elections for the new council for um, next school year. It's, um, they're on Wednesday, so right now there's really nothing going on. We're preparing for elections, so there'll be a whole new group of people on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say congrats again to the class of 2015 and a special thanks to all the teachers that have done such a great job with them all the way through. And I wish Carrie hadn't left already because she sent a really sweet note to my son who was in a great class seven oh, years yeah. ago and to all the kids in her class and just her memories of him and um, you know how proud she was and all. So, you know, I mean, teachers like that. And he ended up actually writing a essay about her last year in Spanish <laughs> class, which I read. Which, which is so you know beautiful that she was one of his most memorable teachers. So you know, all of these grades just really make a difference to get these kids to the 12th grade and off to college and beyond, and to make a real impact in the world. So I just want to say special thanks to all the teachers. Well, ditto that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was impressive. All the speeches, you fellows did a great job. Robert, the students. Um, our famous Andy, this is hysterical. Um, all the kids were just, they were great and um, so proud. And I also want to mention um, also the All Night grad. I don't know if any of you guys went to see the, 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 the space. It was, it was incredible. Um, so the two Tracys, Tracy Rogers, Tracy Fedak, and an army of people, even a life-size operation game. That <laughs> was incredible. Um, but this morning, the cleanup crew, hordes of people came. It was done lickety split. One woman said her cousin lives in, in another town, and two people showed up for our cleanup. And I thought, oh no. But it just goes to show you that just everybody comes together, and it's, it's a beautiful sight. And um, I also want to mention um, Mr. R and also Nat Vaughn. Um, and I think it's Mr. Heim, um, the coalition recognized um, those people for special awards. Um, Mr. R got the Robert C. McGuire Global Education Award. And um, another Blake group got the, um, I think Mr. Cohan? Seventh grade was, uh, social the studies. Social studies, the Visconti. So um, kudos to them. The Marin Band had their concert at Lord's Very Bar yesterday. That was really fun, and, um, and I wish, uh, and I forgot to say it the last time, but if you're watching, JJ and Riley, good luck. Right. <laughs> They've been great, yeah. so yes, and welcome again. I said plenty in the last one. <laughs> yep, it's been a long one. So motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.